you like to work on your stuff, and that's what we're doing here for a little bit of a catch-up. As we get started, a couple things we want to make sure we get paid for right away. First of all, if you like tonight, we would ask you to come back tomorrow morning. We're going to be doing this again at 1030 tomorrow morning as part of our church worship services. If you don't have a church you go to, we'd love for you to come and join us and see what's going on here at First Baptist. Also want to make you aware that on Christmas Eve at 5 p.m., we're going to have a candlelight service. We'd love for you to come out. Uh, it's a great, meaningful service, but we keep it short and time for you to get out and have dinner with your family. So that'll be at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve. One thing before we get started, if you happen to have one of these cell phones with you, if you would just take it out and make sure it's put on silent or turned off, that would be great. And we look forward to a great night of worship. We have a great Carols by Candlelight planned uh, tonight that plays out the Christmas story about the birth of Jesus Christ. So we want to we want to pray and get started. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you for the ability to gather together tonight and to be able to celebrate the birth of Christ. Lord, we pray that as we go through this busy time of year, we would remember why we celebrate that your son came in the flesh, lived a perfect life, and died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Lord, we thank you that you gave such a great sacrifice for us. May we appreciate and be glad and rejoice in what you have done. Lord, we ask that you be with us tonight and give us joyful and cheerful hearts. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm glad that you're here with us tonight. If there is a theme tonight, it would be this, joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let's stand together as we sing this hymn together. <laughs>
tonight, I'm lighting the Advent candle that represents love. Um, Oftentimes, when I think of love and the Advent season, I think of time with my friends, my family, my church family. Um, But I also think of the love that God has for us. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. And so not only in this Advent season do we think about the love of those around us that we care about, but we think about the love that God had for us and that he sent his only son, Jesus, to this earth to not only live with us, but to die for us so that we could be reconciled to him. I believe you have listed in your program tonight at this point that we're, we will receive an offering, which we're going to delay until the end of the service. But let me tell you what it's about. If you'll look inside your program, you, you'll have an a insert that's entitled Care for Christians that are driven from their homes. Now, this is uh, talking about the persecuted Christians around the world that um, either have lost their homes because they lost their jobs, because of their faith, or perhaps their breadwinner, the, the man of the house, has been martyred or is in prison. But what happens is believers around the world right now in many, many different countries around the world are without a home tonight and without uh, the prospect of being able to take care of their family, to feed their family, and many have lost their Bibles, which many times is very rare to have one in the first place, but to have it replaced would be very important to them. So just tonight only, we're going to have an offering Uh, But we're going to wait until the end of the service for you that would like to, to contribute to that. And Brother Casey will tell you at the end what we're going to do. But let's just remember, it's not just us here tonight. And this offering is not for anything here tonight. It's to go strictly for this this benefit for Christians around the world that are persecuted because of their faith. So let's pray for them right now as we continue to worship together. And our bells will lead us in just a few minutes. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful to be able to be here in this wonderful place tonight. And to set it aside, to set it aside, Father, for your glory, for the fact that you came to this earth to be one of us, to take our place upon that cross and to die for the things that we deserve to die for, but instead to give us life and righteousness. And, Father, while we're here, we remember brothers and sisters that are meeting in hidden places tonight, some of them not sure what tomorrow holds for them, lost their homes, perhaps lost loved ones, or in danger (coughs) of losing their own lives. So we lift them up to you now. For those, Lord, in hostile countries and in restricted countries, that what we do tonight might be a small part to help them and to encourage them. But, Lord, it's our pleasure to worship you and to thank you for the joy that has come into the world and come into our lives that's changed us because of a new relationship through Christ our Savior, in whose name we pray, amen.
of his perfect love. Oh, come, dwell deep in hiding ones. There is no need to run. See what your God has done. Christ is born. So come, though you have nothing, come. He is the offering come. See what your God has done. Christ is born. Christ is born.
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and it will be called the Son of the Most High. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The Spirit of the Most High will overshadow me? I don't understand. Am I supposed to? God's Son, I am to bear God's Son. Oh, blessed am I. Of all the women of the world, he's chosen me. Me. Generations have longed for this promise, and I'm the one to carry it? Oh, truly, truly, nothing shall be impossible with God. I can see now how God is remembering to be merciful to the lowly, the outcast, and all history hinges on this alone. Yahweh has chosen to make a home among us, his people. He proves that he loves the forgotten. He rescues the helpless, the helpless, like this baby will be helpless, one of us. How can I bring God's son into the world? Strange how joy mixes so easily with fear. What will tomorrow hold? I don't know, but I say yes, yes. May the mighty hand of God do all that he will. For God alone, my soul waits. May it be to me as he has said.
And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Where should I start? Stars falling from the sky? No. Lightning? No. Not lightning. Not stars. The truth is we didn't know, but we were scared, all of us, as scared as we had ever been. And I don't scare easily. Lions, I know. I can defend a lamb from a lion or any predator if need be. But this, this was like something I'd never seen. I mean, who'd believe it? An angel appearing in the sky isn't very believable, but a thousand of them, 10,000 of them, I wouldn't believe it, but I saw it. With my own eyes, I saw it. And as unbelievable as this sounds, most unbelievable, most unbelievable was the message. Peace to men. His favor rests on us. On us? You mean shepherds? Who, do, who would want their favor to be rested on shepherds? We're unclean, and that means one thing, we're unwelcome. But that doesn't mean we don't know the scriptures, we know the promises. And we've made it for Messiah as much as any priest, maybe even more so. But a stable, a manger, Messiah can't be born in animals feeding trough. All we know is we had to go and find out. The angel said go, and so we did, and we found him there. This baby, this Messiah, wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger.
Now it's your turn to sing. We want you to help us tonight. I want you to stand with your voices full and your hearts full to praise the Lord as we sing the gospel together. Let's think about the words you're singing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth. In, in other words, there was once something that wasn't peace. There was a war, but that's over. Peace on earth, mercy, mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled through Christ. Let's stand together while we sing these uh, Christmas carols together. <laughs> Oh! 
seated. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. It was neither wealth nor is good, though I have both. That brought me on this journey. I'm a scholar, an old one at that, tired too. I've long since passed the day in desire to travel. I'm a pragmatic man of books and letters, and I would have stayed among my sacred writings, except for this. It was written, you see. The prophetic implications were clear. I could not shake it. The prophecies read this. But you, O Bethlehem, from you shall come forth for me, one who will be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. This we've studied, this we've known. And there it was, the star of prophecy, the star of the Messiah in the night sky. Yes. Messiah would come, and soon <laughs> one does not sit on his cushions when one encounters such a sign. No, neither wealth nor power, but longing. This is what compelled me. And so, a journey to end all journeys. Where would it all lead? We did not know, but we would not do otherwise.
Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. I have been for many, many days, but I believe today is special. I am old, but Holy Spirit promised me years ago that I would not see death until I have seen the Messiah with my own eyes. I have been waiting a very, very long time for the hope promised in his holy word and through his prophets of old. But I know that when the Messiah comes, holy God will experience his people in a new way. You see, Messiah will be the very word of God living with us. And he will will wash our hearts and he will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and the whole world will see the glory of our God. Look, I see coming up the temple steps a couple. And though they are poor, I see they have a child. And that, and that they are full of light. Most high God. Your servant can now depart in peace. For mine eyes have seen your salvation that you have promised for all people. A light for the Gentiles and for your people Israel has arrived.
as we read through the birth narrative in the biblical text tonight, I couldn't help but be struck by the repetition that we saw over and over again. Mary was told to not be afraid. The shepherds in the field were told not to be afraid. And when Simeon saw the Lord, the baby Jesus, he knew he could welcome death, not as an enemy, no longer afraid of its power that was there. There's a reason why you see that over and over again in Scripture. Fear not, be not afraid, be strong and courageous. That reason is because when you fear the Lord, there's nothing left to fear. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Those of you that are Christians know the great truth of the story behind it. That it's not about us going to God. It's about God coming to us. Being born just like us, except without sin. So Christians celebrate and rejoice in what Jesus Christ has done. And we fear not, because we know the only thing to bow down and fear is the Lord. If you're not a believer, if you're not a Christian, there is much to be afraid of. You should be afraid of death. It should terrify you. You should be afraid of the judgment that is to come. You should be afraid of the wrath of God. But you do not need to stay afraid. For Christ came, was born, lived a perfect life, died on a cross to pay your penalty, rose again three days later, and ascended to heaven, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is our prayer for you this Christmas season, that you know the gift of life, life everlasting, that is in Jesus Christ, so that when you fear the Lord, you fear nothing else. We thank you for joining us tonight. If you'd like to talk about that, if you'd like to talk about your relationship with the Lord or how to know Jesus or what Jesus did for you, I'll be hanging out as soon as we finish, and I would love to talk with you about how you can know Jesus Christ. When we leave and dismiss in just a moment, I want to remind you, there'll be some ushers out in the foyer with some offering plates. 100% of the offering tonight goes directly to Voice of the Martyrs to help Christians that have been persecuted around the world. None of it goes to the church. None of it's going to stay here. But it's going to help our brothers and sisters in Christ that are suffering for the faith around the world. So we'd encourage you to support that when you leave tonight. I'm going to close this in prayer in just a moment. But before I do, I want to ask, we give all the praise and glory to the Lord, but we are certainly thankful for His servants and how they prepared and what they've done. Would you guys give a round of applause for these people behind me here? We appreciate our sound folks and lighting folks. You guys did an awesome job up there. And I might get in trouble for mentioning this, but today is Brother Jim's birthday. So y'all be sure to tell him happy birthday. Would you join me in prayer before we dismiss? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate and rejoice. And Lord, we know that we have much to be joyous for because when we fear you, there's nothing else to fear. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the salvation he brings. And we pray that if anyone here does not know him, that they would find out more about Christ before they leave tonight. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for coming. You're dismissed tonight.